the fifth member of this astonishing X-Men team has been confirmed as Bishop. Yeah, surprise, surprise. We're discussing that in this video. Plus, we're also discussing changes to Real Time Arena, Dark Dimension recommendations, and all of the rest of your questions from the mailbag. Yeah, guys, on this special Monday mailbag MLK edition. So if you're ready for all that, find that like button and let's go smash it. Alley Flyer. Ah, uh, hello, hello, hello. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I am Valley Flying. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you're having a great MLK day, and I hope you're ready for all of the questions from the mailbag on the Discord, guys. Yes, so we're going to discuss that. We're also going to discuss Bishop, the latest. Uh, I guess it's sort of an accidental leak from the devs on their social media accounts this past weekend. We're going to discuss that. And if this is your first time here, guys, make sure you subscribe for more great Marvel Strike Force content. Hit that notification bell so you get notified as soon as a new video is released. But without further ado, Let's take a look at what was all over the official Marvel Strike Force social media accounts this past weekend. It was this image introducing Kitty Pride as the latest member of this astonishing X-Men team. And as we see here, Kitty Pride, Lockheed, all the information about her kit. And we see some other members of the astonishing X-Men team that Kitty Pride works well with. We see Beast here. We see Jubilee. We know she's a legendary character. We see Iceman coming sometime in this update. Not sure what his release method is yet, though, but... You guys have some guesses? Let me know. And there it is. Bishop, the fifth confirmed member of this astonishing X-Men team, guys. Yes, was rumored for a little while. We saw a slight data mine of him a few weeks ago, but now it has been accidentally confirmed. I guess this was not some... Uh, some secret hint that you're trying to get across because uh, these posts all across the official Marvel Strike Force Facebook accounts, uh, Facebook, Twitter, social media accounts, they have been removed. But because this is the age of the internet, these things get saved. So yes, this is the image that was posted this weekend. So yes, Bishop is confirmed. But without further ado, guys, let's get to your questions of the week from the Discord server on the, uh, from the Discord channel on the Discord server. And if you want to get your questions, question potentially featuring an upcoming monday mailbag make sure you are a member of the discord but boom first question of the week valley of lion do you think we'll see a long-term use of battle pass as supplement character releases the way it's been done with yellow jacket now so i think i think that is what we're kind of going to see with battle pass of uh, the character selection uh we we've seen characters that are not quite farmable and uh they want to start to get some more shards so we've seen zemo no method to farm him yet same thing with yellow jacket and they wanted to get a few more shards out. So I guess that uh, players have a little easier time unlocking Jubilee. So I think that's what we're going to see with this. I think that's kind of going to be kind of their bridge from an unfarmable or unfountainable character, however you want to put it, to the farmable characters or before they become farmable. So that's that's what I think, uh, but we will have to wait and see. Again, Scopely, they play things very close to the vest, some things, and uh, I'm not sure what is going to go on with Season 3 and beyond of this uh, real-time arena and battle pass, but... War, raid stores are awash in characters. The Blitz, Drop, Domino, Rescue is unreliable at best. Yes, I, that, that's, not a, uh, that's not a release method if they're in a Blitz orb. But if they're in a Blitz store, I think that is a uh, release method. Premium orb, 2% uh, farmable might as well be wallet farmable. That's, that's not farmable either, in my opinion. Arena store is the best, but it has been very underused. We just we just got uh, Scream there. So a Scream or Swarm? Uh, swarm. Swarm. I, I get those two confused. They were released kind of around the same time. But yeah, it was Swarm, the Sinister Six member, and uh, has scopely run out of good ways to make new farmables character or new characters accessible to end game players while keeping existing characters available to new players. Uh, I don't know if they've run out, but uh, with the inclusion of Doom Chapter 3 or Doom War, the three chapters that we got last year, it does make me hopeful that they could add more campaigns and give more uh, campaign ways for characters to be farmable. But uh, yeah, unless they unless they start to add a new game mode where you're going to get a new store, I think the current stores we have and then campaigns and then maybe adding additional campaigns will be the release methods that we're going to see. 
What could they do to make things smoother in uh, your opinion? I would like to see uh, characters move through the cadence a little quicker to make this a little smoother transition. Uh, we started to see the, the unfarmable characters start to diminish towards the middle of last year once they started releasing more of these uh, villains, these heroes, the mystic campaigns, and then, or not the mystic campaigns, the nexus campaigns, and then we see more with the Doom chapter. Uh, the, all the Doom chapters that we got released. So I think uh, they can keep adding more campaigns and then the current stores. That That's what I think we're going to have as far as farmability for a while. But yeah, obviously I would like to see more ways, more interesting ways for characters to become farmable and be released. Uh, and hopefully that is something that we are going to see in 2021. I'm keeping my fingers crossed though. All right, uh, Valley Vine, been following you for almost two and a half years. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the support. Uh, first time participant, sub from Florida. What is up from Texas? I was talking to Alliance mates about the tier 15 gear for skill characters. MSF.GG lists Hawkeye, Taskmaster, Black Widow as requiring the superior bladed strikes gear, but in game it shows differently. One requires superior bladed strike, one requires superior devastating strike, and one requires superior crippling strike. Is MSF.GG incorrect or is there an impending update to uh, gear changes or something? So uh, obviously if it says something in game that's different than MSF.GG, then MSF.GG is incorrect. But I went in and looked and uh, at these three different characters and what you're talking about here. And it appears now just this is just me glancing it at it. I didn't look at all of the materials, but I think that uh, they use all of the same gear, all those uh, different skill pieces, the ABCs to get to that same piece, even though that piece has different names on these characters. So I think from from what I glanced at these characters, I think it's the same exact piece. It just has different or or the requirements to build those pieces is the same. It's just uh, the the piece has different names on those three characters. But yeah, if if there's ever something that's different in uh, game than there is in MFF.GG, uh, make sure you uh, reach out to Ty J, Pim Taki. They're very very responsive to the community and are very quick to uh, fix things. So. Uh, yes, I will let them know about this one, but uh, yes, they 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 are quick to uh, uh, fix things if, if there's something incorrect on the website. So uh, big shout out to those guys, by the way, for all the work that they do. Anyway, next question. Considering leveling up some characters past level 75, are there any big stat boosts for 75 to 80? Like focus boost you get from 74 or se uh, 71. So uh, again, this is something that I've looked at at just a glance and most of my... Uh, what I've seen was on msf.gg, but I've taken a couple characters uh, on msf.gg up to level 80, and it appears that it, it's kind of uh, a steady progression from level 75 to 76 to 77, but you're getting a lot more damage, a lot more health, uh, a lot of stats, but it looks to be evenly distributed between all the levels. You're not seeing that big spikes at 71 and 74 like you did with focus and resistance uh, building up those characters, so... Uh, let me know if uh, you guys have found anything different, but uh, just glancing, that is what I have noticed with this, brother. Uh, hey, Valley Hope, all is well in the Hall of Smashing, babe. Ooh, yeah, I love, love it. I love it. The Hall of Smashing, I like that name. Uh, quick question. All I see in Arena is hybrid teams. Who were some tunes that could counter her? Uh, I've always ended up having her uh, having her last, and that runs out. Time runs out before I can beat her. Keep smashing, brother. This is a tough question. Uh, in, in my arena shard, I normally see just black order once in a while. I see other, uh, other hybrid teams and a lot of them do have Emma, but when I see that, I'm just kind of, uh, frothing at the mouth and, or, uh, chomping at the bit. I don't know what is the correct analogy, but I am, I am very excited because when I see that, I know my black order team is going to smash them. So I'm assuming you're not using black order against these teams or you probably wouldn't have too much of a problem. If you are using black order, uh, just make sure that you've uh, timed a uh, flip correctly. Make sure you do it after Emma does a lot of her stuff because then she'll just uh, clear off all the debuffs off the enemy team and then uh, that, that, that flip will be wasted from Thanos. If you're running across another Emma team and uh, yes, you're using a non black order team, I am not sure what to do. So. I'm gonna have I'm gonna ask you to follow up on this question. What are the teams that you are seeing, and what are you using? Because if you're using Black Order and still having trouble, uh, I think it's just a flip. If you're not using Black Order, I want to know what you're using and uh, what your roster is like to uh, and what what you're seeing because I don't I don't see a lot of these that I'm having trouble with. So let me know, and hopefully we can get you a good answer next week, brother. Uh, uh, greetings, Valley Fly, a longtime fan of your YouTube channel. Your advice has helped me progress rapidly, and MSF nice. 
In regard to RTA, I find one out of three battles I'm experiencing no reward points, regardless of win or loss. Having uh, met ability use requirements, this is a problem. That is a problem. Uh, as I'm spending more than 50% of my RTA time not receiving rewards. That's 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 very frustrating for already frustrating game mode, and you're playing it, grinding through it, and not getting any of the benefits from doing that. that that's very frustrating. Uh, are there any others in the community experience the same type of anomalous effects? Uh, yeah, so let me know, guys. If there is, let me let me know in the comments because I'm not sure if this is a one-time bug or if this is a more widespread bug. Uh, normally, normally when the devs are looking for bugs and looking to correct bugs, they're looking for evidence that they could replicate so that they could find corrections. If they're not able to replicate it on their end, uh, there's not really a way that they could... Uh, fix it so uh the more evidence you have i mean uh, i think the best thing would be if you could go into your real-time arena record a few of those and then send it off of you not getting the rewards i think that would allow the devs a little more agency to help fix this for you but i have not experienced i've not heard of this until this but yeah that, that's a very frustrating bug especially uh because it is in a very frustrating game mode but yeah the more the more evidence the devs have the more uh, likely they are to replicate it and fix it so anybody that's experiencing this as well uh send it into the devs and hopefully this could get corrected and make real-time arena just slightly slightly more tolerable hey valley hope all is well with you and hope 2021 has gotten off to a good start for you i hope it's gotten off to a great start for all of you guys and i hope it ends up a lot better than 2020 was but uh i took your advice last time i had a question about dd3 and of another dd3 slash four questions specifically regarding tech and skill. What are the best options for these two origins to build up for both DDs? I have a ton of e, uh, tech and skill gear, but I want to be efficient. As it stands right now, your 14 champs are Phoenix, Colossus, Emma, Hela, Black Bolt, Maw, Minerva, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Carnage, and Anti-Venom. Any recommendations you could make on what skill tech champs might be useful going forward would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for your help and love your content. Keep smashing. So as far as skill gear, you have a few different options. You have some really, really uh, better, better versions of characters that are very expensive. Taking that 90 of these uh, gear 15 uniques and that is Taskmaster, very, very expensive. Nick Fury, very, very expensive. And Red Guardian, very, very expensive. You have, if you have an abundance of gear, then you can take these characters in. But yeah, I would avoid these characters just because of their cost. You got some mid-range options like Zemo. You got some more well-rounded skill characters like uh, Proxima and Corvus. That will probably get you a lot of use in a full Black Order team, especially if you're using full Black Order. They're at the 72 level. And then you got some cheap options that uh, you got Black Widow. You have Yelena and Punisher that are also options in that skill category. Now, as far as tech, you have a few different options here. There's not a whole ton of great tech characters. One that I might bring up is going to be Dr. Octopus. Now, as far as Dark Dimension 4, we're not really going to build them up quickly because all those legendary nodes, they are at the end. So probably one of the last characters that I'm going to end up building up is uh, Dr. Octopus. Uh, you also have a very expensive character. One of the best characters in the game, maybe not as good for Dark Dimension, but Ultron is very, very expensive. If you have a bunch of tech gear and those mini tech uniques, then uh, Ultron give you some value outside of Dark Dimension when you're done with it. And then we have the mid-range options like Ghost. Take 72 of them. It's, it's a more expensive character, but... Uh, yes, very, very good for Dark Dimension. We also have Minerva. You already have at gear 14, so if you have some of that tech gear, uh, it could be very good. She is cosmic, though, so you might want to do a global character first just so you could get through those unlimited notes and then the global characters first, but uh, Minerva, Ghost, maybe Shuri if you have an abundance of gear, and then uh, after you're done with Dark Dimension 4, Doctor Doom is a very, very cheap tech character, uh, cheap mystic character as well, but yeah. Uh, those those are my recommendations as far as those traits. Some expensive recommendations and some very cheap recommendations as well, brother. All right. Uh, oh, long question. All right. Hey, Valley. Greetings from Austria. Uh, just your thoughts on a second blitz shard that maybe work a uh, work around for the crazy sim blitz scores. Um, talking about the second shard for players that haven't used the sim blitz option for the entire current blitz. Uh, maybe that way you could get around the problem that there's no chance for lower TCP players to get higher ranks. So there's a possibility for low mid-range players to get more shards 
if they are willing to invest time by normal autoing or manual fight. I, I kind of like this idea. As soon as you do the first sim blitz, uh, you're moved into the sim blitz shard, and then uh, yes, you're you're in a total different shard. And that I think if they could manage to pull us off without breaking the game. This would be something cool and uh, allow players that don't want to sim, that don't have the rosters to sim and aren't at that level. I think it's level 64 that you need to be to start to sim, but aren't at whatever level it is to start to do sim blitz. Uh, you can you can start to get a little higher score in different shards. I'm I'm always in favor of more blitz shards rather than less, but uh, it is it's not it's not my uh, decision to make. It's skill please. So yeah, I, I like this idea though. This this could work if uh, Scopely would we be willing to do something like this? Uh, next question. Cheers from Montreal. First off, I love your content. Oh, thank you for watching, brother. You guys are the ones that make it possible. I don't know if the question was already asked, but here it is. I just got Doc Ock and I'm wondering who to kick off the OG team to make place for Swarm, Doc Ock and Electro. I know people usually take out Vulture and Shocker, but I have a lot of red stars on Shocker and Mysterio. Is there a way to take out Green Goblin and or Rhino? So Mysterio, Mysterio and Rhino are usually the two that are left on from the OG team. I know that uh, I, I think uh, Reminex is experimenting to see if Green Goblin is a better one to take out and then uh, or to leave in and taking Rhino out. I'm not sure how his tests are going, but yeah, I, I'm not I'm not using Vulture. I'm not using Shocker uh, on that team. And, uh, you know, I think everybody got that five red star Shocker when they had that event back then. If you were playing back then and you grinded enough for those milestones. But yeah, he's he's still on the bench for me. He's on a trash team for me. Uh, I don't know if he adds a lot as a character. I like him as a summon, but uh, yeah, there, there could be better summons. Uh, I, I guess the thing would be to experiment based on what your red stars are and what you're trying to do in the game mode. But yeah, the normal, the normal best version of the Sinister Six is Swarm, Doc Ock, Electro, Rhino, and Mysterio. But obviously you should experiment based on what your roster is and your red stars because i think that that team is based on flat across the board for the uh sinister six so you might you might want to experiment uh yeah i i'm not i'm not that big of a fan of shocker but if if he if having him on the field will allow you to summon a stronger uh, uh sinister six character from doc ock then uh, it might be worth it to take him uh to bring him with you and take somebody else out Next question, Valley. I'm glass. I guess I'm end player. Free to play has been a game since the first week of global launch. Oh my goodness! I I would say you probably are. Uh, with that being said, I'm now at a point where I have number of teams unlocked, but not really leveled up yet. Outside of symbiotes, pretty much every team could use some work, though. Fantastic Four and Emma Rogers are close to being finished. So what are your top five teams remaining to be taken up as strong as you can for the purpose of total game usage? So. Uh, really, the only teams that I'm really, really uh, using all the time right now are Black Order and Symbiote. So those are the two that I would really want to build up. Other than that, I kind of build my roster out for uh, wars. So trying to get some better defensive teams, some better offensive teams for wars. So uh, Emma, it looks like you're going that direction with Fantastic Four and Emma Rodders already. And if you don't have Black Order, you didn't mention them. I would definitely build them up. Uh, other than that, I'm, I'm working on X Factor now. They're one of the best, if not the best, war offense teams and uh, can counter a lot of teams. So uh, if you don't have X Factor ready, built up and running, that is a that is a team, definitely a way you could go with uh, how to build your roster, how to build your teams. Uh, there's some great defensive teams like the Doc Ock. I guess, uh, I guess the Doc Ock Sinister Six is great on offense or defense. Uh, military skill. I know they're getting getting some hate, but uh, if you can build them big enough, they can take out Emirators. I'm not sure what other teams they could consistently take out. I think there's a lot of uh, teams that they could punch down against some of these meta teams, but consistently uh, getting some punch ups against meta teams. I, I don't know if they could do that, but uh, that is a team that I'm probably going to invest a little in just because I got pretty good red stars on them. They're kind of like the aim for me. They're not they're not one of the greatest team, but I got lucky with red stars on a team. So I think I'm going to build them and uh, yeah, just 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 for fun. Not 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 because I think they're one of the best teams out there, but I, I want to see what they could do with all the red stars. But that's 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 the only direction I'm kind of going with my roster right now. And of course, the astonishing X-Men. Because that is the uh, that is rumored to be the next legendary unlock team, but uh, yeah, that's that's all I'm that's all I'm working on right now. So I know it's not five, but those those are what I'm building, brother. Let me know in the comments what you guys are working on and what your top five teams are. 
Uh, a Valley does T4 on Mr. Sinister's basic. Give the clones a level seven on their basic ability too. No, uh, the way Mr. Sinister works is if you put a T4 in his ultimate, that is a T4 for all of the clones abilities from their basic, special, ultimate, and the passive. So that ultimate for Mr. Sinister, very, very important. And I guess this is a follow-up uh, for Doc Ox. T4 basic applies uh, Sinister 6 to the summon as well. So Doc Ock works a little differently than Mr. Sinister. You put the basic in Doc Ock, that is the basic for the summon and the special in Doc Ock for the T4. That will be the T4 for the special for the summon and so on and so on. So Doc Ock, it, it's a one-to-one -one translation with Mr. Sinister. It is just that ultimate that you need for all of the T4s in the clones, brother. Hey, Valley, from my perspective, you got the greatest job in the world and you crush it. You can't get much better than Talking about Marvel and video games, I'm a huge fan and notice you're always asked the same questions in one form or the other. There, there are a lot of similar questions, but there are some interesting questions that pop up as well. And I do have the, I, I think I do have the greatest job and it's all thanks to you guys. So thank you guys for watching this channel and allow me to talk about Marvel and video games and whatever. And I hope it provides you guys value either in the form of entertainment or helping your games or whatever. So I want to big, give a big shout out to all of you guys, but let's let's get to the question. There's a new one. All right, if you could develop five brand new characters for the game, who would they be and why? What abilities would you give them? Uh, thanks for the amazing content. Keep you smashing it. By the way, this might be a great collaboration video with you and another on Void Cheers. Uh, this, this would be a great collaboration video. I think I did one very similar to this before the holidays. I think it was Cub Fan Han with some other characters that I want to see. So uh, just off the top of my head, I guess I guess let's uh, try to answer this again with some characters that I haven't really mentioned as far as my wish list and aren't rumored because there, there are some characters that are rumored and there are some characters that are already tied to some uh, Disney Plus shows or some uh, MCU releases that uh, are probably going to end up in a game so without mentioning them uh, keeping so there's a lot of characters that are i'm not going to mention and i could i could just list all mutants here if i wanted to but i'm not going to mention too many mutants like gambit rogue because they're rumored out but for the list uh abomination i want abomination because i think uh if abomination came to the game there's a very good chance that we would get other hulk characters and maybe having hulk move off of that wave one avengers team to a full gamma team or a full hulk team whatever they want to call it so abomination i, I have mentioned him before but yeah i want a hulk team uh silk another me a member of the spider verse that i would want to come i think my top pick in there would be spider gwen but i've mentioned her so many times uh my daughter's mentioned her a bunch of times as well so silk another character in the spider verse that i've used in marvel future fights so that'll be a character all right i mentioned not a lot of mutants except for one and i really would want to see nightcrawler come to the game i don't th i haven't heard any rumors of him uh, coming to the game, but uh, yeah, I would like to see him and uh, amongst a bunch of other mutants as well. Uh, Ancient One, I think Ancient One, I, I haven't mentioned her previously, but I would like to see her or him if they want to use a comic version or the uh, the Tilda Swinton or whatever her name is version from the from the MCU. Either version I would be happy with, but bringing her into the game, maybe allowing Scarlet Witch to go on another team with Vision and uh, just make a full supernatural team or a full mystic team and maybe adding Kaecilius and Wong and some of the other characters from the uh, Doctor Strange universe. And then one more, the Asgardian, sort of Asgardian, hasn't been in any MCU movies that I know of, but Angela. I remember she was one of the best characters in the first game on the, that I made content on this channel, Marvel's Avengers Alliance Part 2. She was she was the meta-defining character in that game and haven't really used her since then because she hasn't been in any games that I played. I, she may have been in Future Fight. I'm not remembering uh, her in a Future Fight, but she may have been in there. But yeah, Angela would be my fifth pick. So that is, that is my pick of uh, characters that I haven't picked before, but uh, let, let me know your guys' picks of some obscure picks, not rumored, not tied into any other games. All right, let, that, 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 those are my picks though, brother. Uh, love the content and being part of the community. Well, I, I love that you are part of the community, brother. Uh, was interested if Drew say hi to him. Great dude, I, I will. He, he doesn't have any rumors this week. He's not joining us this week or on this video maybe maybe he will later in the week but yeah I, I will say what's up to him has he heard anything about my favorite villain omega red he's got types to hands marauders x-force and many more could he be coming so this was a character that i wanted as the fifth marauder for a long time until we got word that emma frost was coming and emma frost just kind of knocked it out of the park for that team so 
I still would like to see him come to the game. Interestingly enough, I was watching the X-Men animated series uh, yesterday with my kids. And guess who was the main villain in the episode that we were watching? It was Omega Red. So uh, I, I would like to see him come to the game. But yeah, not heard any official or unofficial rumors about this character. Just a lot of uh, wish lists that have Omega Red on them. But yeah, I, I think he'll I think he'll sell very, very good if he comes to uh, Marvel Strike Force. Uh, next question. Hulk Buster idea. Sorry if this is too wordy. What if Iron Man becomes empowered to Hulk Buster depending on the enemy? In the movie, he evokes Hulk Buster because he goes against Hulk. So if your team does not have any protector class or if the other team has either Thanos Ultron, Ultimus, Doc Ock, Doctor Doom, or more than one protector, Iron Man becomes empowered. Yeah, so I, I would like to see Iron Man become empowered. That would be really, really cool. Whatever stipulation, whether it be having no protector on the team or having certain enemies on the other team, I think I think that would be a good addition to uh, the game. But uh, I, I'm more in favor of this empowered Hulkbuster, like you mentioned, rather than a whole separate character. But I, I wouldn't be too mad if they brought Hulkbuster to the game as a separate character. I mean, we already have two Eddie Brocks and Venom and Anti Venom. And then we also have two Peter Parkers in Spider Man and Symbiote Spider Man. So it wouldn't be unprecedented if we have another Tony Stark in the game. Once empowered, if he dies, the armor is shed and he summons Iron Man like Phoenix Dark Phoenix mechanic. Feel free to run with this idea. It sounds good. I, I like that second part, though. If if Hulkbuster died, he, he summons Iron Man. I think this would be very, very fun if they brought this to Marvel Strike Force. So I, I am going to start pushing this more. So a uh, big shout out to you, Barnock, for this idea. This is I like this one. All right, the Valley Smash. Are there any advantages to getting into DD4 before you have all the tunes ready? Since DD4 is unlike DD3, where it took 20 days to get through some notes, I was thinking of waiting until I have all the tunes for all the, all the categories ready. Since the node requirements are meh, they will not help me level up any tunes to Gear 15 anyway. I also see uh, that anyone who has gotten into DD4 is now just waiting for mats for the next category. So... Uh, yeah, that's why I, that's why I recommend planning stuff out very, very well. Uh, what I did this past week when it's opened my uh, orange gear, a lot of my orbs that had those uh, that had potential to have those gear 15 mini uniques and see, take an inventory of my team. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm thinking of bringing in characters that I could pivot on easily. And right now, I, I think I'm leaning based on my resources, not based on how great these characters are. I'm thinking of uh, bringing in. Uh, who did I decide? Mr. Sinister, Ghost, Yelena. Yelena is very, very cheap. That's the main reason I'm bringing her in. Uh, Thanos is cosmic, which may not be the best choice for the first run because I still have to do another global character, but I'm going to get so much use out of Thanos with that Black Order team, so I'm thinking of bringing him up. And then my last character, Symbiote Spider-Man, because I'm going to have to bring up a bio symbiote character anyway. He's the most expensive, so uh, that, that is probably the first characters, character that I'm going to do, but yeah. Uh, from what I've heard, there's not as crazy as Dark Dimension 3 either. I'm still level 79 as I'm recording this, so I'm not in Dark Dimension 4 yet to get first-hand experience, but uh, I, I think you could go in. You're going to start with three of those universal nodes where you could use any of your characters, so from that sense, it's very important to get in, but once you're ready in, you don't need five characters per node. You don't need a full team for every single node. Once you have that first five, you could go into all the subsequent nodes with less than five characters. So I don't I don't think it's super important to build out full teams for each one because it might take a while for you to get the legendary, the legendary characters. So you might want to do those last and not do those first. But uh, focus on your global characters first is what I would focus on. And then start to go on your uh, cosmic characters, then your city characters, and then your legendary characters. I would work on them in that order because that's the order you're going to tackle those nodes in Dark Dimension. But plan out. Uh, I highly recommend that Verondius spreadsheet that he made for Dark Dimension for the calculator for all your gear. A little tedious entering in all your uh, gear, all the little pieces of gear, but it's very, very helpful in planning that out. You could you could go with a few different characters and see uh, which would be the best and uh, would have you have the least overlap with all your resources. So link for that is going to be down in the description, guys. All right, uh, Morning Valley. Um, uh, enjoy the heck out of yours and other Envoy's work. Thank you, brother. Uh, would you still recommend Ultron armor as a uh, punch-up counter to Emma Rodders right now that ISO 8 has been introduced? If not, do you have a team that you would recommend more? So normally normally when I see a large Emma Rodders, I'm just taking in my Black Order. Uh, there's, there's 
I, I see some big uh, Emma Rodders, and uh, that is the only one that could really, that I have high enough. I have Symbiotes pretty high and Black Order pretty high. So those are my only teams that could really counter some of these high level teams. So normally I'm using Black Order, but if I see a lower Emma Rodders, my Power Armor and Ultron aren't that strong. I would still use them. Um, you know, the Skeletary, if you have a small, if you have a decent Skeletary, you could go up and slightly, very slight punch up against the Emma Rodders. Uh, there's a few other teams. I heard Pimtech could do it as well, but uh, yeah, I think the best out of that option based on my roster is still going to be that Ultron armor, but uh, there's there's a bunch of counters for Emma Rodders right now, and I guess it's going to be dependent on what you have in your roster that you're using and uh, how, how strong your characters are and, and what kind of Emma Rodders you see in war. If you're seeing five 600k uh teams in war for emeralders there's it's going to be limiting how much uh counter options that you have but if you're seeing them in the 300 range it's going to widen it up so it, a lot of it depends but that, that's that's what i'm doing brother uh greetings from miami greetings from texas brother appreciate everything you do just finished second run of dd3 per the calculator and i'm about 30 percent on the way to dd4 and I have some time. I got the seventh red on Thanos, six red on Symbiote Spider-Man. Just got the six red on Cole. That is shaping up to be a very nice roster you have there. Uh, both my Doc Ock and Mr. Sinister are six red or six yellow, five red. And I should have enough gold tokens to get the next one. A Kara Stewart to get bring one to six red star. Obviously, Sinister is an excellent choice, but I've heard amazing things about six red star Doc Ock. Would love to hear your uh, take on what direction to go. So with Doc Ock, uh, he is a legendary character. So if you're planning for Dark Dimension 4, you could use him on the, some of those initial three nodes that have unlimited traits, but you're not going to be coming around and using Doc Ock again until you get to that legendary part. So uh, based on what you're doing, I probably would go Sinister first. I don't know if you need all those red stars on these characters. So I going to help because that's going to determine the health and all the stats of the clone so the more red stars you have on mr sinister the better i'm not sure if you need it specifically for dark dimension but i would i would i would build up sinister i would get him to gear 15 before doc ock unless unless you have like an abundance of resources and it doesn't matter and you don't need to save but if you're like me and trying to save uh, i'm going with sinister first and then doc ock just because of when i'm going to need those characters in dark dimension brother hey valley love the videos thanks for all your work Finished my timed run of Dark Dimension 3 yesterday. Oh, congratulations to you. No more of that hard node 3 and 7 and 8 in Dark Dimension 3. You're done. Congratulations. All right. A while back, the advice was don't take anyone to gear 13 that you aren't taking to gear 14 because orange gear was in short supply. And uh, it, it some of it kind of is. Uh, you mentioned the uh the more bottleneck is with the gear 14 uniques the gear 15 uniques not the catalyst and other orange gear do you think it's safe to take tunes up to gear 13 or should we keep hoarding gear 15 and make it uh happen for the critical tune so you got to remember it's not just it's not just the catalyst it's also those mini pieces like for symbiotes you have those alien spores that is going to be the bottleneck getting for a character from 12 to 13 and you're gonna also need that taking the four, uh, 13 to 14 and 14 to 15. So that is going to be the bottleneck that you want to watch. That's what you want to be careful of, not the catalyst. The catalysts are very abundant nowadays. They're, they're, they're putting them in the, in the economy. And I haven't really run short of catalyst too much. But those uh, those uniques, those uh, things like alien spores, and I can't remember the SO2 serums and a lot of those other things. Those are, those are what the bottlenecks are for 13. And then you got those mini uniques for 14. And then you got those new mini uniques for 15. So... Uh, be careful with that, and I still would recommend planning out your roster, making a decision based on the resources you have, and not necessarily who are the best characters, because if you're just waiting to get the resources for these best characters, you may not get good luck and not get in, so uh, play, see what you have, see, take inventory of all your resources, and then plan it out that way would be my recommendations. But yeah, it's, it's not the catalyst that you got to worry about going from 12 to 13. It is all those other little uniques that you have to worry about because they're not, they don't pop up as much. Uh, what is up, Valley? Personal life question. Don't feel the need to answer, uh, depending what it is. Uh, I was just curious. What did you do before uh, a living, before being a content creator? So uh, before I was a content creator, was a personal trainer, was in the fitness industry for a long time there was about a three-year gap in there that i worked in finance but uh that's that's been my career path for a while and then now it's turned to this i actually started this channel because i was making videos about uh 
personal training, nutrition, working out. And I just I did made some video game uh, videos on this channel just for fun. And it started taking off way more than the other stuff. And it became more way more profitable than fitness and things like that. So it just kind of evolved that I'm spending more time with this channel. But yeah, that, that is what I did before that. Also, is uh, being a content creator your full time job now or do you have a different gig? No, this is my full time job. And it is thanks to you guys, all your support that you've given the channel, all the support that you've given the sponsors of this channel. So uh, big shout out, big thanks to you guys. So yeah, it, it is because of you guys that I get to do this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, like I said before, hopefully it's providing a lot of entertainment or uh, uh, knowledge for you guys. <laughs> All right, uh, what is up, Valley? Got a question about Sinister Six. I know bringing Doc Ock, Electro, Mysterio are no brainers. Usually, people would then bring Swarm and Rhino slash Green Goblin for the others. But since I already have a five red star Shocker and a three red star Rhino, would it make more sense to bring Shocker and Vulture to get the benefit of five red star Rhino summon with a T4 passive? This might make sense since the Shocker summon would be the same as what I have now, but the Rhino summon would be a lot stronger with my regular one then. Uh, so this is the example that I was talking about with the other Doc Ock question. Uh, some of it's going to be based on your roster. So if bringing your own shocker is going to give you the same shocker and not bringing your rhino is going to give you a lot stronger rhino, then I think in this scenario, it does make sense to switch it out like that. There are a lot of scenarios that you're bringing in different teams, but you know, all things being equal, I think you, you did uh, hit the, the best team on there. Doc Ock, Electro, Mysterio with Swarm and then either Rhino or Green Goblin as the uh, fifth there. But yeah, if, if, if there, this is a scenario that like I was talking about before where uh, it, it might make sense to bring other characters based on your roster. And uh, yes, I think this is the scenario that we we're talking about earlier from that other question, brother. Hey, Valley, been watching the channel recently and loving the content. Hope your new year is going well. Same to you, brother. My question is, what team do you think is the best for completing the city nodes? at three stars in Heroes 7-1 through 7-3. Also, what power should the team need to be cleared? Current have a uh, 150k powered defenders and a 26k powered uh, Spidey. All other city heroes are pretty low for me. What would be your recommendation? So uh, I, I would use my strongest characters. And for me, uh, you know, fortunately, they're pretty good characters. It's Symbiote, Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, Punisher, Ghost Rider. And then for the fifth, I'm either using Miss Marvel or Squirrel Girl, as far as my recommendation. So if you could get those characters, uh, sounds like you're a pretty early on player and you may not be able to get some of these characters for a little while. Defenders, I don't think are the best. I think you need defenders a lot stronger in order to get to that node. Spidey is, is a decent character, but doesn't really have a solid team. So if you can start to get Symbiote Spider-Man, if you can start to get Anti-Venom, uh, Ghost Rider is definitely a great tune. So is Punisher. You go with that direction and then, uh, yeah, Squirrel Girl, if you have her, but uh, Miss Marvel, I think, is a little easier to farm. So uh, look, look to those characters, but yeah, unfortunately, defenders aren't that great. And I think you're going to have to build them up probably over 300K to, uh, to finish that. But if you guys have more experience with lower level teams in Heroes 7 1 through 7 3, let me know what team you guys used in the comments because I think when this came out, my, my characters were already pretty big. So I'm not sure what the lowest level of characters you would need to uh, finish these uh, nodes are, brother. Uh, when are you going to make a new account and see what things are like for new players? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I don't, I don't have plans to right now. Just I, I hardly have time to play my main account. I don't. I would have like no free time if I was playing two accounts and a brand new account as well, especially trying to keep up with a lot of the uh, things with couple alliances and all the uh, headaches with that. So probably not going to do that. But uh, yes, I, I for me, when I was playing Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, I was watching some of the content creators like OMG, like Arnold, and they had all these end game accounts. And for me as a newer player, it was valuable for me to see where I need to take my roster later. So it helped me plan things uh, way far in advance for that. Uh, so hopefully that's the kind of value this channel continues to provide you guys. But um, probably, probably not going to have the time to do a new account. But if I ever do, I will let you guys know. That does sound like a, a fun thing. And it was something that I wanted to do for a while. I just never had the time. So yeah, that I, I think it's very unlikely. But it's it's not a 0% chance that I wouldn't make an account. All right. Hey, Valley, a couple of months ago, I asked you about making my own videos. You gave me some really good tips. I started a month ago and have around 150 subs. Nice. Congratulations, brother. 
want to thank you, bro. You have been an inspiration. So yeah, just keep making videos, brother. Just say if, if anybody else is wondering about if they should make videos or not, just do it. Set no expectations. Uh, you know, don't set expectations with the with subscribers or revenue or anything. Just do it for fun and learning. And if, if something happens, then great. But if not, you have fun and you you learned a lot through editing and different things that uh, YouTube can make. And, and, and just uh, being in front of camera, lighting, there's so much things that you learn from YouTube. So just just take it for what it is. And if it gets in, it blows up and gets bigger than then yes. But yeah, if, if anybody's thinking about making a YouTube channel, you should just do it. Uh, now about the game. I just checked Kitty's stats and health is really low. I did not expect that as she has a healing passive. So maybe red stars are not as important as we thought. Could be right. I, I've not looked at her stats, but yeah, a lot of her, her healing is based on the evades or the misses of enemies. And uh, that healing is based on her and max health. So yeah, if it's low, then may, maybe we don't need a lot of red stars on her. I didn't look at that uh, specifically, but yeah. Uh, another raid team seems premature after the symbios. Do you think it may be preparing for Ultimus aid? This, this team does confuse me though. I'm not sure if it's such a big, big preparation for Ultimus eight. I mean, we just got Ultima seven, what a few months ago. It seems like a few months ago, but it, it's, it's probably approaching a year now, but I think we've had Ultima six for two years before they added Ultima seven. So not sure. Does this team seem, seems very, very premature for Ultima eight? Uh, last one. Oh, so, and, and so I, I, every time I've asked a lot of people that does uh, seem to know things, a lot of them are suspecting that this is going to be the next legendary unlock after Jubilee. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But that's kind of the suspicion because this is another raid team where they have a really good raid team in the symbiotes. Maybe this is just for those raids difficulty sliders for the new Greek raid sliders that we got. But yeah, they're they're not they're not available in every single node as well. So uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what they are. They, it's potentially next legendary unlock, but looking very, very good. And uh, Kitty Pride, even with her low health, does have a lot of survivability. So I think she's going to add a lot to this team. So whether whether you need a lot of red stars for her to be as effective, it, uh, I guess it's up to debate now. But yeah, she's she's a great character. Last one, I faced Doc Ock with Emirators and War really hard. What do you think about this hybrid team? Ooh, uh, so I'm guess you're I guess you're replacing. A uh, saber tooth on that team, and that makes it very tough to uh, offense down that team. You get another summon. You have a big AOE that you have to worry about. That that is a very strong. Only thing, if you're you're breaking up a couple meta teams, which I think a lot of people are doing now anyway in war, because you only need eight teams on defense, ten teams on offense, and we have way more than eighteen teams in the game. So, uh, you're, yeah, I think we're gonna see more and more hybrids on war. Uh, defense coming up, but yeah, that, that one looks very scary. That sounds very scary. Emma Rogers is crazy and Doc Ock is crazy as well. Uh, hey, Valley Fine. Oh, this is a long question. First off, thank you for your energy and uh, always positive, uplifting in the time that things are uncertain. So keep on smashing it. Thank you, brother. Uh, question is, do summons and clones count towards real-time arena objectives? For example, Nick Fury can summon shield uh, operative and protector and when the summon characters take their turn, do they count towards the various objectives like skill, support, protector, etc.? Another example is the Mr. Sinister. If I have She-Hulk as an objective character and I use Mr. Sinister to clone a She-Hulk on the other team, does a cloned uh, She-Hulk count towards meeting the objectives? Cheers. Say hello to Drew for me. Tell him I owe him a couple of frothies the next time he has rumors passed on. Oh, for all the good rumors he's passed on. So thank you for that. Again, I can choose Drew's not on this video, but I will pass on the message and uh, let him know you got some frothies waiting for him next time you see him. And uh, we actually have an answer here. Let me see if I could uh, move this uh, thing up from Shadow Earth Shaker. Uh, I think they count towards ability. And this is this is my exact same answer that I would give as well. I think they do count towards the ability use as far as the objectives, but I definitely know that, that they are not going to count towards knockouts. Only the characters. Uh, you could only get potentially a, fi a potential five knockouts per battle. And uh, yeah, so if someone dies and then they get brought back to life and then they finish the battle with five in the field, doesn't matter how many kills you got. If there are five enemies on the field or five of those original enemies on the field, uh, no matter how many times they got back back to life, uh, you will get zero knockouts. And then, uh, yeah, so that, that's I know the knockouts don't count, but uh, I am assuming that they do count for the objectives of using the uh, abilities. But uh, let me know in the comments, guys, if you have confirmation one way or the other. Uh, I have just assumed that it was counting and I've never actually checked 
I encounter the skills because most of the time I'm autoing anyway. So if you guys know, let me know. Let the rest of the community know. Next question. Two quick questions. Is a four yellow, four red ghost good enough for Dark Dimension 4? Uh, I have not in Dark Dimension 4, so I don't know firsthand, but because she does percent base damage, I would think she would be good enough, uh, at least when you're using her ultimate. I'm not sure about the other moves that she has, if she has enough focus with those uh, low gold and red stars, but uh, I think I think her ultimate will still do a lot of damage. So I think she will be good enough for Dark Dimension 4, but if there's someone that is in Dark Dimension 4 with a very low ghost, let me know how that ghost performed. Uh, now that I have a seven yellow, five red ultimate, should I spend some resources on him? I would not. I have, I have, I don't invest too many resources in ultimates. I don't have a use for him. If you have a specific use for him, specific team that you're trying to build and you have the extra resources, then yes. But if you're just building him because he's ultimate and he takes a long time to get, then no, I don't, I don't think he's that valuable. I don't think he fills a lot of roles on any team, maybe on a Cree team, maybe on a hybrid team, but yeah, I, I don't use Ultimus and I don't uh, I don't struggle a lot because of it. What's up, Valley Flying? Greetings from the Philippines. WandaVision's first two episodes have been really awesome so far. What do you think are the chances that this season or the, after the series concludes? Um, oh, I guess I guess it's the continuation. Could we get an entire team of Scarlet Witch with Vision along with three new characters that possibly appear in this series? Wiccan and Speed, Monica Rambo, maybe even Quicksilver if he comes back. I'll be down. Uh, I would be. I would throw down. So Cash Scopely, uh, make it happen. I, I think all these characters are likely, or not likely, are possible. Let me let me rephrase that. I think all these characters are possible. And uh, in addition, a couple other characters uh, we've seen: Agatha Harkness. Uh, I guess she's a rival of Scarlet Witch in the comics. And I guess it's possible that she would come to the game as well. I think it's also possible Mephisto. We've seen uh, some little things of him in the trailers. And as we know, a very, very huge tie-in with Wiccan and Speed and Mephisto. So I think those are the likely candidates that we would get for WandaVision. But it seems that uh, February is already planned out. So I think uh, the next characters we might see as far as uh, Disney Plus or MCU tie-ins are going to be from Falcon and Winter Soldier. But... Yeah, I would love to see some of these characters, especially Wiccan and Speed, because that's that's opening up mutants coming to the MCU. And uh, yes, more mutants in Marvel Strike Force, the better. Valley Flying, love your MSF content, brother. I have two questions. I don't have Enemy Maw yet. Are there any other characters you would recommend for the time being in the Black Order team? So who I used as a placeholder while we were waiting for Ebony Maw to be released was Kingpin. Obviously, the team does not work very well without uh, Ebony Maw being there because you need all of the Black Order members to get that Empowered Thanos. And uh, if, if, if you don't have Empowered Thanos, a team is a very different team. It's like it's like some good characters that are combined together, but it's not the Black Order team. So uh, Kingpin is who I use as a placeholder, and I don't think that disturbs too many other teams. So I think uh, Kingpin would be my recommendations. But yeah, get Ebony Maw as soon as he comes back. Get all your Inhumans ready because... Yeah, that, that's going to really change that Black Order team. If Mr. Sinister has some Red Stars and a Clone Ultron, will Red Stars apply to the Clone as well? And wouldn't that make the Clone Ultrons more powerful than the original Ultron? Yes, as far as damage. I don't think as far as health, but I think as far as damage, a cloned uh, Ultron will have some Red Stars on him, which means that his damage is going to be stronger than the normal Ultron. So yeah, exactly right. That was, that was a weird thing uh, because Ultron doesn't have Red Stars, so... Is 2021 going to be the year that he falls so far out of the meta that Scopely is going to give him red stars? Or are we going to see that in 2022 with some official red stars for Ultron? Maybe. We'll see. But yeah, this is an unofficial way to get some red stars on Ultron, brother. And his damage will be stronger than the uh, the normal Ultron. Uh, what is up, Valley? Hope you, uh, if if the red stars are high enough, all right. Uh, what is up, Valley? Hope you and your family are doing well. I recently unlocked Doc Ock. He's a great kit, but I feel like he was able to keep so many, I feel like if he was able to keep so many more Sinister Six members until they were all on the field, he would live up to his legendary title. What are your opinions on Doc Ock's kid? He's a, he's a great character. He, he fills a lot of roles on different teams and he makes a lot of teams better. His not being able to offense down the team that Doc Ock is on is very big and he's a huge counter to teams like Ebony Maw, Yo-Yo, and uh, just provides a lot of value from there. I would also like it if he was able to summon more, but I guess summoning full characters and not minions would be too powerful. So that's why they did that. But yeah, a little, little disappointing of that slight feature that you mentioned there. But 
Uh, yeah, he's a great character, great legendary character, and one of the characters that I'm probably going to take into the legendary nodes in Dark Dimension 4 once, once I get closer to those legendary nodes, brother. Uh, hey, Valley, what is going on? Hope all is well, brother. Thanks for answering my question last week. I'm planning DD4, and I know everyone seems to be bringing in Phoenix, Invisible Woman, Doc Ock, Ebony Mom for the legendary nodes. I'm not sure about Invisible Woman. Uh, unless you got a ton of resources, uh, I don't know if she's necessary to complete that. A legendary section, although I'm not in there, so maybe maybe she is necessary. Wondering if I skip Doc Ock and do Shuri instead, if it's going to hurt me since she is stronger, just because I need so many more of his superior titanium alloy and also wanted to bring up Red Guardian, who also takes the same pieces, would rather bring up over Doc Ock because I have seven reds on him. What are your thoughts? Thanks, man. Keep on smashing it. So uh, if you're planning for Dark Dimension 4, I don't think you have to worry about either of them right now, Shuri or Doc Ock, because you're not going to use them till you get to that legendary section. Uh, I would go in with some other characters like global characters, maybe cosmic characters. Uh, and that that is who my initial starting five would be some of those earlier node characters and not a lot of these low, later node characters like Phoenix, like Shuri. But yeah, if, if you want to save the resources for him, you're, you're going to use a lot of those uh, titanium alloys on Red Guardian, or maybe not a lot of those red uh, titanium alloys, but you're going to use a lot of those uh, Gear 15 mini uniques on uh, Red Guardian there. He's a very, very expensive character, but uh, that, that sounds like a good plan. I mean, for long term, maybe not specifically for Dark Dimension, but uh, for long term, if you really want to build up your Red Guardian, I think he does have value as a standalone character is one of the best pure tanks in the game. And uh, it's decent on a military skill team, uh, despite some controversy with that team. But yeah, I, I, I like your plan and I think it could work. Uh, Valley Vine almost got my five for DD4 needing 15 PCS for Ghost. Not sure in the fourth for to go with for Cosmic though. Thanos, Proxima, Minerva. Thinking six red star Thor or long shot, but I only have four red star, four gold stars on long shot. Only thinking long shot as he's a mutant. Is he working with that low stars or should I go with Thor? Uh, you might want to go with Thor. I think there's a lot of great mutant options that you have uh, to take into the dark dimensions. You got Ebony. I mean, not Ebony Maul. You have Emma Frost. You have Mr. Sinister. X-23 is another great option. All of them take mutant gear. And then you got your dad bros as well. Uh, I, I think I, if I was in your situation, if I'm using Thor a lot, especially in other game modes, I probably would go with Thor right now until I was able to get more gold stars on long shot. Uh, my long shot is also four red stars. I don't think I'm building them up just because of that. So yeah, if, if I was in your situation, I would probably go with Thor just because of the red stars you have in that character. But uh, think, think long term after Dark Dimension 4, whatever character you think you're going to use uh, after you're done with Dark Dimension 4 and get more use out of that character, that is who I would recommend going with. And that is it for this edition of the Monday Mailbag, guys. I want to thank each and every one of you that left a question on the Discord this week, guys. Whether it got answered or not, I do appreciate all of you guys that leave your questions. Now, coming up this week, we finally got that interview scheduled with Cerebro. So that should be coming out on Thursday, guys. So that should be a fun one. I already submitted a bunch of questions to him. So... Uh, yeah, we, we got some big questions that we're uh, talking to Cerebra about uh, later this week, unless something happens. I know we've been talking about this interview since November has kept getting pushed back, but it looks like it is finally happening this week, guys. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, I part of that notification squad as well. Also, we got the uh, normal uh, the weekly news video coming out on uh, this Wednesday as well. So a bunch of cool stuff happening on the channel. So uh, I will see you guys next time. Check me out on social media. And before you go, check out some of my other videos and give me a hog fist bump. Oh yeah, baby. Valley flying out. <laughs>